Hi, it's Dwyer. It's Friday, July 16th, 2021. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk about a casino robbery in broad daylight. We're about to commit it. Earlier here online, I talked about how the initial line in the Manny Pacquiao versus Errol Spence fight was way off. They had Manny Pacquiao as a plus 350. Right at the time I made a video, it's here online. Google Dwyer, Manny Pacquiao, Errol Spence. And I said, hey, you've got to take the plus 350. This is ridiculous. You know Pacquiao's talent. You know Pacquiao, in his last fight, beat an unbeaten Keith Thurman. You know that. Manny Pacquiao is not a plus 350 to any man in the welterweight division. I don't care if that person is Errol Spence. I don't care if that person's Terrence Crawford. Well, here's the kicker, folks. Here's the kicker. If you bet 10 bucks, we'll keep the number low, we'll keep the number round. If you bet 10 bucks on Manny Pacquiao at plus 350, that means you stand to win $35, right? 10 times 3.5 were Manny to win the fight. Well, just understand, you can lock in a profit right now without the fight even happening. Because understand, the line has moved so much, so much, that it's sliced in half. Pacquiao's now going off at a plus 174. Errol Spence is going off at a minus 206. So what that means is if I bet $20.60, on Errol Spence to win $10. I can't lose any money. If Errol Spence wins, not only that, I make money if Manny Pacquiao wins, right? I could even guarantee myself a rate of return if either guy wins. If I bet more than $20.60 on Errol Spence, if I bet 25 bucks on Spence, I'd be getting more than the outlay I put on Manny Pacquiao at plus 350. So do the math. If you got Pacquiao for $100 at plus 350, you're looking at expected winnings of $350. How much would it cost you to guarantee the return of the $100 you bet on Manny Pacquiao should Errol Spence win the fight. Only $206. Right? Think about that. So, without the fighters even hitting the ring, you can guarantee yourself a profit right now if either guy wins the fight. Right? You locked in the Manny Pacquiao at plus 350. Because the line has collapsed, because that line was bogus, because that line was a casino mispricing, you are now in the driver's seat. So you could imagine, hypothetically, you show back up at the casino, you go to the window, it's the same person behind the counter. Let's pretend, let's have a fantasy here. Let's pretend they remember your earlier bet. So now you come in and you say, hey, I'd like to bet... $20 on Errol Spence, <laughs> right? The person by the counter is going to look at you and say, oh, man, you're, you're guaranteeing yourself a win, absent a draw, right? There's always that draw possibility. And, of course, at that point, if security comes over because they realize you're that customer who's leaving the casino with more expected winnings before the fight even takes place, you can just turn to them and say, hey, look, player, I'm just playing the lines you give me. This is what betting's all about. This is why you want to grab mispricings before they adjust. 
This is why you want to hedge. For savvy gamblers, let me point out too, that if you want to even pure hedge on this play, you can pay a little bit extra. You have stuff to work with. Understand, as long as Errol Spence is below a minus 340, you're good. Right? You can actually take Spence, if you want it, as the hedge to win. Keep in mind, Spence doesn't even have to win by knockout. The odds you got on Pacquiao on the other side of the play were that ridiculous. Spence just has to win. Right? You can take Errol Spence and pay the higher fee so that if Spence wins and if it's a draw, another possibility, you still get your money back. Think about that. Right? Think about that. As for the fight itself, look, I know I'm going to sound ridiculous. Manny Pacquiao is in his 40s. But Pacquiao hits harder than Errol Spence. Pacquiao is faster than Errol Spence. Pacquiao walks around between fights around his fight weight. So Pacquiao's training camp is all about preparing for the fight. Right? Errol Spence, by contrast, walks around 20 pounds heavier, according to reports. So, you have a guy who's now late 20s, early 30s. Right? He's going to have to lose weight to have this fight happen. Even if he's at weight, he's going to have to starve himself to have this fight happen. Spence himself has talked about moving up to 154. Right? Think it through. You know, when you have a guy who's either weight drained or who has to lose weight to magically make weight at the weigh-in, how is that guy who doesn't have the hand speed of Manny Pacquiao as it is going to be able to have hand speed to compete with Manny Pacquiao on fight night? Let me also point out, too, that many people are commenting on the fact that, you know, Pacquiao's in his 40s. And that, you know, Pacquiao's stamina might fade. Folks, Pacquiao went the distance with Keith Thurman. Also, when have you ever seen Pacquiao out of shape? We know Pacquiao is a guy who likes to play basketball. Monitor the training camp. He showed up to the wildcard gym. Freddie Roach is already praising him for his fitness, for his work ethic. Right? And let's face it, too. In the annals of boxing, Manny Pacquiao has some of the fastest hands I have ever seen. Maybe he's a little bit slower than he was 10 years ago. Right? Maybe. But just understand, that still makes him faster than most of the people in boxing. Let me also say, too, I know the skeptics out there are saying, oh, you know, Errol Spence has a good jab. And, you know, Manny is a southpaw, but he's fighting a southpaw. And Manny's going to be leaning right into that jab, right? Folks, does anyone realize that the way Pacquiao got the lightweight title over David Diaz, a guy who beat Zab Judah in the amateurs, was by beating up Diaz? who was a southpaw, right? Pacquiao's just too fast. If Errol Spence thinks he's going to be able to keep Pacquiao at the end of a jab like he kept Mikey Garcia, they're kidding themselves. Let me also say, too, I've read some of the comments here in the comment section, right? And, of course, people are saying, hey, well, what about Marquez? He didn't have Pacquiao's hand speed. Right? You know, Marquez knocked down Pacquiao. Knocked out Pacquiao, right? The knockout, by the way, is the second knockdown that Marquez gets in that fight. Think about it. Well, folks, this isn't the fourth fight between Errol Spence and Manny Pacquiao. This is the first fight between Errol Spence and Manny Pacquiao. Somebody here tell me what happened in the first fight between Marquez and Pacquiao. 
Marquez, great counterpuncher, came in the ring, could not figure out Pacquiao's hand speed. Hits the canvas three times in that first round. Right? Three times in that first round, folks. Keith Thurman, knocked down early. I want people to follow Thurman's interviews about the Pacquiao fight. Thurman himself is amazed at Pacquiao's punching power. Right? It's sudden. So, forgive me, I see Errol Spence about to leave. 150, excuse me, 147, right? Pacquiao already fought Antonio Margarito, who he considers to be the biggest guy he's fought, right, physically. He's already fought a guy who comes in, tries to crowd him. I want people to tell me the difference between Margarito and Errol Spence, right? I know Margarito was fine with tampered gloves at one point, but what I want people to do is to go back and look at Margarito's victory over not just Cotto, but Sergio Martinez. I consider both Cotto and Martinez to be elite fighters, right? Understand, everything Errol Spence does, Margarito used to do, right? Margarito would get you between his shoulders. Right? Margarito would come inside. Margarito would work you over. Right? Manny Pacquiao has already been there. The end of that fight, Margarito had a fractured eye socket. Was never the same afterwards. Manny Pacquiao won that fight with some distance between himself and Margarito. Right? Let's face it, too. You know, Errol Spence, don't get me wrong, I think Spence is an excellent fighter, right? I've been on the wrong side of a Spence fight. I had Mikey Garcia, right? But Sean Porter, isn't Porter shorter like Manny Pacquiao? Didn't that fight go the distance? What about Spence's last fight? The Danny Garcia fight. Didn't that fight go the distance. Now, maybe I'm an old-timer, right? Me and my friends are here online lamenting the fact that Biz Marquis died, right? We remember the 1980s. Maybe I'm an old-timer. But which one of these fighters is going to be the crowd favorite? Which one of these fighters is going to be the judge's favorite? When Manny Pacquiao enters the ring, folks, this guy is loved. He's loved. When Manny Pacquiao enters the ring, in my opinion, he's going to have at least a two-round lead on the judges' scorecards. Two-round lead with the hand speed advantage. Right? If a round is close and Pacquiao just pivots, gets inside, throws a big combination... Who are the judges going to give the round to? Right? The Errol Spence who destroyed Chris Algieri, who came back and beat Kel Brook on British soil. Right? That Errol Spence might not be the guy who struggled against Sean Porter, who just went the distance against Danny Garcia. By the way, Danny Garcia in interviews has said Lucas Matisse hits harder than Errol Spence. Does anyone here remember the Lucas Matisse-Manny Pacquiao fight? Let me also say, too, that, you know, I understand that Pacquiao has moved on. Pacquiao is now a senator in the Philippines, right? Right? You know, boxing is really something Pacquiao does on the side, right? Well, understand, Pacquiao's in the United States right now. <laughs> he's, he's training for the fight. By the time that fight comes around, I'm just telling you, Pacquiao will be the person who has the easier time making weight. 
He'll be the crowd favorite. He'll have the hand speed advantage. In my opinion, he'll have the power advantage. So unless you believe Errol Spence is going to catch Manny Pacquiao and drop him like Marquez did several fights in, right? Unless you believe that, or unless you believe that Errol Spence can duplicate, it's the first Timothy Bradley fight where Bradley, with two bad ankles, somehow is able to establish a jab on Manny Pacquiao. Now, keep in mind, Bradley's roughly Pacquiao's height. It's a little bit harder for a tall guy to establish a jab on a shorter guy with Pacquiao's legs. But unless you believe that Errol Spence is somehow going to keep Manny Pacquiao outside, away from him, I think this is a real tough fight for Errol Spence. Right? It's a very tough fight for Errol Spence. Right? So I don't even buy this line. But the point I'm making you the point I'm making to you right now is I'm gonna take profits right here. I'm encouraging people to take profits right here. If you got Pacquiao at plus three fifty, folks, you can take Spence to win, do the math, you can take Spence to win and profit right now if either guy wins the fight. This is a casino heist in broad daylight, right? Don't be rude. As you make the bet and they give you your betting slip, look at the guy and say, thank you very much. That's the least you could do for the ridiculous plus 350. You got on Pacquiao when this line first opened. By the way, today, late betters can get a plus 174 on Manny. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.